Hello everybody and welcome to another year-end wrap-up video. So 2020, what a year. I know it certainly didn't go quite like everybody planned, but nevertheless it was still filled with some great trips, beautiful places, and quite a few memorable moments. Today's video will be a look back at our entire year of adventures, highlighting the different projects and trips we've been on. Of course I want to first start by thanking all of you for the support throughout the year. I'm very appreciative for everyone that has watched our videos, commented, and subscribed. A big thank you for that. Alright, so getting things underway, way, way back in January of this year we had a little birthday party. Our website, azoffroad.net, celebrated its 10th anniversary of being online. We took a deep dive, looking back at the different iterations of the site and how it has grown and changed over the years. Shortly after that, we were back in the garage to work on part 13 of our ZJ project. This was the long-awaited winch install onto our front bumper. The job was simple and only took a few hours, but allowed us to finally put our 9,500 pound winch on after sitting on the shelf for a while. At this point, we also remounted the front driving lights on top of the winch and finally wrapped up the front bumper project. And aside from goofing off with it here at home and helping my neighbors with some landscaping, I haven't needed to use it seriously on the trail yet. Nevertheless, I'm happy to have it with me on my trips now. A couple weeks after the winch project, I set out for my first overnight trip of the year. I headed west to the small town of Hope for some exploring, where I traveled north into the Granite Wash Mountains. After a few easy miles, I arrived at the site of Winchester and the Desert Queen Mine. In what was one of the quickest boom to bust stories in Arizona, I visited the remnants of old cabins before making it over some narrow roads to the actual mine site. Here, an impressive hopper, haulage tunnel, and a few other interesting structures remained at this old gold mine. After checking out the Desert Queen, I returned back south to the pavement very briefly before taking a nice desert shortcut through the mountains. Along this trail I found the remnants of an interesting building and what's left of the Cupa de Oro prospect. I eventually crossed over the highway and soon followed the Hope to Harquahala Road as it headed south into the little Harquahala Mountains. The road was smooth but scenic and within a few miles I found a nice set of rocky hills to spend the night at. I set up camp and enjoyed a great dinner and evening around camp before packing it all up the next morning and continuing south. I crossed over I-10 from there and continued a few miles to the old Salome Emergency Airfield. While little remains other than a few dirt runways, it was neat to see this spot, originally built in the 1930s and used by early commercial and airmail routes. A few weeks later I made a video talking about emergency and recovery gear. I went through everything from first aid and survival to vehicle parts and tools, all things I carry with me on every trip just in case. And while I have just about everything I think I may need, I got some good suggestions from those that commented on the video for a few other things to carry with me. From there it was on to the ATVs for a ride up Castle Hot Springs Road. We headed for the site of the Big Reef Mill. The ride featured mostly wide, dirt superhighways and a short stretch of rougher trails before getting to the actual mill site. Big Reef was built in the 1960s to process mica from nearby mines and featured an impressive layout of equipment left behind. From old hoppers to a large yellow tank with several large cement foundations and a few other things, it was a neat place to check out not far off the main road. On the way back we visited the remains of a smaller, more mobile operation before eventually getting back to the trailer. It was soon back to the jeep and off past Gila Bend for another overnight adventure. I crossed the Sentinel Volcanic Plain and set out for the Oatman Massacre site. After some more good roads and a few bumpy trails, I soon made it to the site. It was here in 1851 when the Oatman family was traveling west and was attacked by natives on a bluff overlooking the Gila River. Not much remains behind today, but wagon marks can be seen on the trail and a few crosses are scattered around. This area was highly traveled as part of the Gila Trail and later by the Butterfield Overland Route. Evidence of that remains across the landscape today. 
After talking with some new friends, one of which was a local historian, I left the site and pushed further across the volcanic plain. The trail got a bit rougher and tighter in spots, and I soon made it to an old building. It was unclear what exactly this was used for, but it appears to have been a small mining site, complete with a partial dam, located in the river below. From here, I retraced some of my route back towards the massacre site, and found an excellent place to set up camp, right next to a well-preserved section of the Butterfield Trail. I walked some of the historic trail, enjoyed the desolate scenery, and ate a simple dinner in honor of those traveling the trail. The next morning I found some petroglyphs nearby before returning to the main trail out. I continued south back to pavement and checked out a few buildings near the railroad tracks at Sentinel Station. After this I did a video talking about my camp kitchen setup, which is based out of a 40 year old camp box built by my grandpa. I explained the equipment I like to use and showed some of the old gear still left in the camp box. It was then back to the trails as my dad and I rode through the Wickenburg Mountains. Our goal was to make it all the way to Copperopolis, but the rough and still wet Castle Creek stopped us just a few miles short. From there it was back home for some quarantining where I made a video talking about helpful Google Earth overlays you can use for trip planning and research. It featured a few different overlays that you might find helpful if you haven't seen the video yet. By summertime I hit the desert trails one more time before it got too hot. I explored the northern Belmont Mountains, visiting the Lost Spaniard Mine, Scott Mine, and the Black Pearl Manganese Mine. These three mines were all fairly small, but offered some interesting remnants left behind at a couple of them. I poked around in the desert and ended up finding a nice camp near the Lost Spaniard. After a relaxing night with a couple more beers, it was back to the paved road and back home. In the weeks following, I made a video explaining the basic camp gear I take with me on my trips. The main point of that was to explain you don't need to spend lots of money to get started camping. From there, it was on to the biggest trip of the year, the North Central Arizona Special. And I began my five day solo trip in Baghdad. I traveled northeast along the edge of the scenic Bem Mesa. The trail was easy going, but got progressively rougher as I turned off a side road. I eventually parked the Jeep and hiked the remaining mile into the Black Pearl Mine. This operation was absolutely fascinating. The former tungsten, molybdenite, and iron producer operated as early as 1915 and was worked up through the 1950s. Numerous things remain to look at from this vantage point high up on Loco Gulch. From the Black Pearl I continued north into Prescott National Forest on wide open roads. Past Yolo Ranch, I found First Night's camp in a partially burned out forest spot. The next day, I continued into Williamson Valley, passing through Chino Valley and then continuing along Perkinsville Road. I crossed the Verde River and continued north, slowly climbing up and onto the Colorado Plateau. Late in the day, I made it to Sycamore Falls and eventually through Garland Prairie. The trail got slow going in places and I pushed further on to find camp just before dark near East Pocket. The next morning, I checked out the incredible view overlooking Sedona. I took my time continuing on my route, checking out an old forest cabin in Furno Draw. I made an early camp not far down the trail near a beautiful meadow at Fry Lake. The next day I pushed east, dropping into Oak Creek Canyon and crossing Highway 89A. The trail was rough again, but I eventually made it to Munns Park and stayed east. After stops at Mormon Lake and Stoneman Lake, I explored the gorgeous area around Apache Made Mountain. I spent the last night camped out just north of the small volcanic hill. All in all, this had been an excellent trip filled with all kinds of terrain spanning the 250 miles from Baghdad to Apache Maid. After returning home and taking a break to get my appendix taken out, I made a video showing what went into making the North Central Arizona Special. It was a deep dive into the editing and post-production process, but I wanted to share my side of the story and explain why I prefer quality over quantity when it comes to making videos. Following that, we were able to get one more ride in for the year, traveling from Castle Hot Springs Road to the Dragon Mine. The trail featured a little bit of everything as we crossed San Domingo Wash, and the Dragon was another cool place to check out. 
This former gold and vanadium operation has been active at numerous different points for the last hundred years and featured plenty to look at. After returning home from that trip, I spent the last month or so filming and editing a few more projects, planning new trips for 2021, and spending some much needed time with the family. I was also able to update our website a bit, so if you want to read more in-depth articles about some of the places featured in this video, and a few other spots from the past, there are now 12 new pages up on our site, with some other new updates and trails on the way soon. So that's about it for this one. Another big thank you for all the support over the last year. It wasn't quite as busy as I would have liked, but still lots of cool places visited and many miles traveled across this great state. I hope you ended up having a decent year and wish you a very happy new year. I look forward to sharing more adventures and projects in 2021, and as always, we'll see you on the next one.